Some time ago, we explored self-imposed Doom challenges that were deemed impossible for the longest time. Very talented Doom players managed to complete most of them, but in the end, there were still some left. Thankfully, the video ignited some kind of spark within the Doom God community. A spark to challenge the impossible, and boy, did they go hard. I highly recommend to watch the first video before checking this one out. Go watch it now, I'll wait. Alright, let's go check out what the Doom Gods accomplished. Eform 3's Impossible Secrets Let's do a quick recap. There are two secrets in Eform 3 that are impossible to trigger because the torch hitboxes make them inaccessible. To trigger a secret, your player origin must come in contact with the secret sector's floor, but no matter how much you hug the walls or torches, there's simply no way. There is some progress however. A demo exists where Zero Master clips through the wall through a fairly specific void glide. Doom's collision detection can be a bit jank if you collide into a corner. The game amplifies your momentum while running into a corner, and with enough speed built up, the game fails to do a collision check with the wall and your hitbox between two ticks. To create an artificial corner, you can lure an enemy to this wall, build up momentum, and yeet yourself out of the map. This way you can trigger a torch secret because sectors bleed out of bounds. Two problems. One, there is no way to get back in the map, so you can't exit the level anymore. Two, the second torch secret is still inaccessible. There is no way to reach it when clipping through this wall either. So Eform 3 100% secrets is still impossible. So maybe, maybe someday we'll find a way to go out of bounds, attack both secrets and also go back in the map to exit. Only time will tell. Eform 7's impossible secret. Last time we were able to trigger one out of the two impossible secrets through a very specific rocket jump. But the second secret sector is too small and too close to the wall to trigger. It's similar to Doom 2's map 15, where a very small secret sector is impossible to trigger, but thanks to a pain elemental spawning skulls into you, you drop through the floor and trigger the secret nonetheless. Eform 7 has no pain elementals, so we cannot use those. There is however another bug you can exploit. In Doom, if you save your game while standing more than 50% over the edge of a surface, then reloading your game will drop you to the lower surface. This way you can trigger the secret. One problem though, saving and loading isn't allowed while recording demos, and demos are required to prove the challenge is possible in the first place. So this challenge is deemed technically impossible for the time being. Let's still turn it yellow because it's practically possible. Moving on to Doom 2, no one has done a non-2 assisted pacifist run of the Icon of Sin yet. I can say with confidence that none will ever pull this off. The lock required is too insane and so is the precision. The only way I can see this being done is through a cosmic ray flipping a bit of Romero's head's position. A very convenient bit flip. Placing Romero's head right in the middle of the onslaught. Even if that did happen, it still wouldn't be demo compatible, so no. This challenge will remain incomplete forever unless a major game breaking bug is discovered somehow. A pacifist run for TNT Evolutions Map 5 was only done through a tool assisted speedrun and was therefore considered incomplete for the longest time. Well, not too long after the first Doom's Impossible Challenges video, a madman named Night Terror decided to tackle it and actually managed to beat it. This is what they had to say about the run. Quote, TNT Map 5 UV pacifist remains unbeaten no longer. The level itself is super frustrating because of the huge amount of luck required. A couple of seconds into the run, your fate is already in the hands of 4 shotgunners that can kill you in a fraction of a second. The shotgunner by the stairs is the worst, but fortunately you can use the imp to kill him. Ideally, you want to get to the area where you can grab the yellow key before the infighting ends so that the imp goes dormant. Otherwise the imp must be made infight with another shotgunner. If the shotgunner wins, it's fine as long as he doesn't wake up. If you have the yellow key, at least 20 health, and the dormant enemy is not facing at the direction of the stairs, you've passed the hard bit. The two imps on the stairs plus the two imps next to the doors outside can be a bit of a pain, but luckily there's a consistent way of making them get out of the way. Quickly get into the room without dying to barrel explosions, make all the enemies go through the teleporter, and then wait for 15 minutes for all the enemies but one to kill each other. Or you can YOLO it, rush to the teleporter immediately, and get a faster time. Yeah, good luck with that. On the way back, you simply have to be careful going through the mass of imps accumulated at the entrance. But by moving around a little bit, they always get out of the way. There is usually one monster in the final corridor, but you should be able to run past him. Unquote. A very impressive run, and probably the longest 17 minutes of Night Terror's life. Well done, that's another challenge off the list.
A pacifist run of the worst hitscan hell level ever published by id Software is unimaginable. But as stated in the intro, the Impossible Challenges video served as a source of inspiration for some doom gods. Here we have Yona G, who pulled off the very first two assisted pacifist run of Stronghold. Here's what they had to say about the run. Quote, oh boy, where do I begin? The main inspiration behind this was the Sinos video on seemingly impossible challenges in Doom speedrunning. Great video by the way. <coughs> oh, well, thank you. The part onto the red key went fairly quickly, but the staircase leading up to the red key button was a problem. I had to lure out monsters and just hope that the hit scanners have a bad time hitting me from any possible direction. After grabbing the armor and medikit, I headed to the room behind the bars that I just opened up. The maneuvering there is pretty insane, and honestly, I'm quite surprised that I didn't lose more health than that. After getting to the other side of the boxes, there came the hardest part, the narrow corridor. I had to lure out monsters one by one and get around them or let someone else kill them for me. The demon was particularly hard, but I thankfully found that you can kinda get him stuck while the shotgunner slowly kills him. I went up the stairs to grab the blue key, when I realized one thing, the barrels blocked my way and I can't shoot them. Well crap, I had to go back down the corridor, where the doors open up, putting way more monsters into that area, and just hope that everything works out. And it did work out, the imps helped me blow up the barrels, I struggled my way up again, grabbed the blue key, and move on. The final part was honestly the easiest one, I was so tired that I didn't even care about my health. But luckily it was still enough for the last room, where I successfully paved my way to the exit room and pressed a damn switch of the 19,458 ticks of pure madness. Will this be done in real time? Only if an out of bounds trick can be pulled off somewhere early in the map, otherwise never. I shoot a couple of times and swing my hand in the air to wake up monsters, but I carefully watch the whole thing many times just to clarify that I did not hurt any monsters with any of my attacks during the run. Sorry Desino, I know you marked your words, but I had to do it." Unquote. Well, I admit defeat, but in my defense, I never stated that a 2 assisted run wouldn't be impossible, but whatever. Very impressive run, and thank you for the shoutouts in the text file. We can color this one yellow now. But wait, there's more. To rub salt into the wound, three months later we've got another pacifist run done by Clumsy Doomer. What makes this one special? It is done without taking a single point of damage. The run uses so much RNG manipulation that all the hit scanners fail to hit the player. I'm, I'm speechless. A TNT Evolutions Map 26 pacifist run was considered impossible because of the impassable specters at the start. But Zero Master found a way to make the jump from the window to the exit altar without relying on multiplayer companions. Here's what Zero Mast had to say about the run. Quote, I wasn't sure if this level could be done pacifist even with tools, so I had to investigate. Turns out it's just barely possible to jump to the window without any damage boosts. Would have been more difficult if I would have to wait for a Revenant missile or use an imp to boost against. Obviously, Revenant missiles were going to substitute the rocket launcher. I was thinking it would be extremely difficult to get two high damage missiles to hit at the same time, but I found a different method. I assumed that if you are hit by several projectiles at the same tick, they will all do damage, but I don't think that's true. So this demo looks a lot more stupid than it should have, since I don't think it was that necessary to gather that many projectiles. At least it was rather straightforward to do and it probably helped with getting all the damage required. It was also rather fortunate that you could manage to turn the revenant projectiles around the other way in the room, so that they wouldn't hit from the wrong direction. The normal way is impossible, and this method is definitely too assisted only." End quote. And that's another going yellow! Thank you Zero Master, very cool. Before we move on to Plutonia, here's a quick shout out to David Assad, aka A1S, for beating both TNT Map 2 and Map 9 on Nightmare difficulty and getting 100% Secrets 2. Map 2 took him over 700 attempts, and he's the second person to ever beat the map on Nightmare with 100% Secrets. Map 9 took over 4000 attempts, and in the end he even managed to beat Ancalagon's time by a couple of milliseconds. Both runs can be found on his YouTube channel and are commentated too, definitely worth checking out. In his words, my greatest Doom achievement, Sunlust and Plutonia Nightmare are nothing next to this. Speaking of Plutonia, none other than Zero Master managed to do a pacifist run of map 7. To assisted you ask? Oh no, the madman skipped that part and immediately went for a real run. Here's what he had to say about the run. Quote, After watching a YouTube video by Decino regarding challenges thought to be impossible, I decided I'd have a closer look at this one. I will admit I would have done this much sooner if I had known how easy it would be. It just looked nearly impossible to do without tools, since the chain gunner seems so vulnerable and there's nothing to kill the Menki by. It's possible to wake up a Baron by firing and standing on the starting stairs, and if you're left with two Menki by, you could manage to get them killed with the Baron. 
However, you can get the Mankey stuck by getting close enough to them, and the chain gunner can stand in a spot where you cannot get hit. So in the end, I didn't even need a Baron. Smiley face. Unquote. From red to green, incredible, and of course, thanks for the shoutout in the text file. The last challenge of this list is doing a pass run of Plutonia's map 30. A proof of concept demo was made by Lightspeed, where your archer jumped to the brain's opening and used the cyber demon to shoot rockets into the icon of Sin's brain. A Doom player named Playmo actually managed to do a pass run without the use of tools. Very simply said, the icon of Sin spawns a pain elemental, the cyber demon accidentally damages the pain elemental, the pain elemental gets angry and starts spitting lost souls, and the cyber demon starts shooting lost souls. It took Playmo 829 attempts to record this. This is a very simplistic breakdown of the run, but it's a lot more complex than it sounds. Coincidence made an excellent video about Playmo's run and thoroughly breaks down each step made in the successful run. Go check it out. But yeah, another challenge of the list, heck yeah. And with that, Plutonia's challenges are fully completed. Pretty ironic, since Plutonia is seen as the hardest commercial Doom game out there. So, within a year, a lot has been accomplished. Will we ever see a fully completed table? Honestly, probably not, unless new game-breaking exploits are found somehow. As weird as it may sound, the only two runs that may happen someday are pacifist runs of TNT's map 9 and map 26. Perhaps also e 4 3 if someone finds a new way to go out of bounds. Like I said, the remaining challenges require new, unfound strategies or exploits to be completed. I guess only time will tell. But wait, did we really cover all the commercial Doom games? Well, we've got... um... No, oh, dear lord. I want to keep the master level short and won't bother with stuff like Pacifist and Nightmare 100% Secrets runs. There are two oddities you may encounter as a casual completionist, however. Right off the bat, we start with a stinker. Mephisto's mouse... mouse... mass... mausoleum? At the end, you need to shoot a bunch of rockets into the Icon of Sin's brain. A big group of specters are placed in front of the brain to serve as meat shields. The specters are placed rather sloppily though. Some of them are even stuck inside walls. One specter in particular just doesn't want to die. There doesn't seem to be an angle where you can hit the specter with a rocket. And its origin is also obscured by the wall, so splash damage deals zero damage. There is however a way to kill the specter by leaving the brain room and walking on the thin latch that makes up the Icon of Sin graphics. From here you can snipe the specter with the chain gun. It's tricky, falling off the ledge is easy, and the icon will spawn enemies so you need to hurry. But it's definitely doable, I can see this one being done rather quickly. Or not, no one in their right mind would voluntarily play this map. But for now, since no demos exist, I'm have to mark it down as a challenge that is yet to be beaten. Map 16, Nessus, contains one secret which is inaccessible. It's a broken secret similar to E407 where the sector is too thin to trigger. Coincidentally, both maps were made by the same author, John Anderson, aka Dr. Sleep. There's no pain elemental to help trigger the secret, but you can use the save reload exploit to sink into the floor. You will need to do an arch for jump into the hole though, and that's tricky. Since this secret requires an exploit that won't work for demo recordings, we can mark the 100% secrets challenge as technically impossible. There are more wads that can be considered commercial doom wads, but including the master levels is already pushing it. We're not going to cover them because no serious doom god cares about them. But yeah, some great progress was made, and I'm really curious how far we can push doom's limits. Major props to everyone involved in these runs, directly and indirectly. You can check out the YouTube channels in the description. Thank you for watching, thank you patrons, and shoutouts to 19day, Andrew Yukumchuk, Andrew Dicklin, Art Cox, Basil, Beaks Make Me Coom, Beardman858, Bouncy Bob, Kappa Bitch, Chief Kochwake, Cyprian Rusen, Fabrizio Araya, Joseph Schanz, Kirill Gorobets, Matthew Merken, Matthias Zippert, Nata, Pyro Shi, Quake Gamer62, Raven King, Ryan Quinn, Robert Wakeley, Sean Wang, Steven Alustic, Teko Kami, The Bell Tolls, Thomas, Timovey Olegovic Gerasimov, Turbine2K5, Viktorik Moe and Vladimir Zherkov. Thanks for sticking around, see you in the next one.